We're back with Dominic DiMaggio. What a great name, DiMaggio. Has a great it ring to it. Nice, it, it sounds wonderful. Yeah. What a time thinking back to the '40s when mm. all three DiMaggios were were playing and played on many All Star teams with Joe. Yes. When you look back, yes. what, what was the most special thing about that? I know you hit him in. In 1941, actually, the first year I was on the All Star team, uh, I replaced somebody who batted behind Ted normally. I was a leadoff man, so mm -hmm. if I had started an all-star game, I would never bat before Joe or my teammate Ted, two of the greatest ball players I had the pleasure of playing with, well, or and against. Uh, but uh, in this particular game, when I went into the game, I replaced someone who batted immediately behind Ted Williams, so that when I came to bat the first time, there was Joe standing out there at second base. And I got a base hit and drove him in. And after the game, I told him, look, in the future, all you've got to do is get on base, I'll drive you in, you see. <laughs> but that's not, that wouldn't be the norm. Uh, and as it turned out, I was the on-deck hitter in the 1941 season when Ted hit his famous home run, the one that rocked the All-Star game and uh, made history. So uh, that was a quite, a, a, quite a, an incident because there was a big power around the pitcher's mound as to whether they were going to pitch to Ted in that particular spot or walk him and then pitch to me. But they ended up pitching to Ted and that was a mistake. <laughs> Another great story that I enjoyed reading about was when the Red Sox were at Yankee Stadium one year and your brother Joe told you you were playing too short. Oh, uh, on, uh, I, I, I suppose it was my first trip to Yankee Stadium. I had a tendency to play a very shallow center field, which I did. I played a very shallow center field. And in Yankee Stadium, the wind currents are not the way they would appear by looking at the flag. If the flag is blowing in one direction, that doesn't necessarily mean that's the way the, the ball will carry. Joe pointed this out to me after my first game, and I, it turned out to be uh, detrimental to him because the next day when I went out for batting practice, I had someone hit some balls to me. And I did notice that uh, the flag was not a true indicator. Uh, so I learned the wind currents. And during that game, I played six or five, six, seven steps deeper. And as a result of that, I was able to catch two long drives that Joe hit that day. And had he not told me, I don't think I would have caught up to them. <laughs> and then he told his team, I should never have told him. That's right. He made a mistake. Were you too close? Back yes. Then? Oh, yes, from the time we were little boys we're not close uh, uh, to the extent that we spend a great deal of time together because we do lead different lives. Uh, Joe is traveling a lot, good deal, lives out in San Francisco. I live on the East Coast. Uh, I have a family, Joe's single, and so his life, lifestyle is considerably different than mine. Joe is out front a good deal. I think he would like to be a little more private. Uh, it's just not in the cards for him. I've enjoyed being private. And perhaps the fact that he is out front has made it easier for me to live the kind of lifestyle I've enjoyed. It must have been so interesting to be part of that era, as I said before, and just having a brother, uh, two brothers actually, playing in the majors and, and seeing him when you played against him and seeing him playing with him in the All-Star Games. I mean, it's obviously so unusual, but you were close back then and there wasn't a big rivalry with you two? Or? Oh, there was competition. Oh, sure, there was plenty of competition. Every time I walked into the Yankee Stadium, I hated those pinstripes. There was nobody I wanted to beat worse than the New York Yankees. Only worked out once in all the years we played, but it was satisfying. The one year was a pleasure. Yeah, because there's such a this mystique factor about your brother. Even though he's in the public eye more than you are, you're just coming out now with your book, but uh, he's been known to be so classy and such a mystique factor. Is that because you think he's so reserved that people always, he carries this persona this about him? This is not... <laughs> certainly not a put-on thing. Uh, this is his natural lifestyle, and I suppose that's what makes him so uh, intriguing. Uh, it's just a natural, normal uh, stature and way of living. That's, that's, he does his thing, and he does it naturally, and that's the way it happens to be. I had the pleasure of talking with Joe here at the Downtown Athletic Club about two years ago, Yeah. and he was quite fascinating. I'm pretty, I suppose I'm pretty much the same way. I just go my way and do what I have to do and let the chips fall where they will. Did you get a chance at all to 
know as Marilyn Monroe at all in those days? Oh, I got to know her, but uh, nothing to talk about it. Uh, I guess I got to know her. Yeah, interesting lifestyle about uh, Joe and, and Marilyn. When we come back with Dominic DiMaggio, we're going to get some of his insights on the game today and maybe get you to tell us more stories about yesteryear. We'll be right back.